Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my MongoDB tutorial. Because of numerous requests, in this video, I'm going to focus completely on how to use MapReduce with MongoDB. Now, MapReduce basically just allows you to split a large problem into many smaller parts. And in this tutorial, I'm going to teach everything by providing numerous different examples. So I have a lot to do. So let's get into it. Okay, so here I have my terminal, or if you're on Windows, your command prompt, and I'm just going to start up the MongoDB server, and then in another tab, I'm going to open up the Mongo shell, and here we are, and let's get going. So I'm going to use my test database, which is now empty, and what I want to do here first off is provide some just straightforward examples on how to use map and reduce with straight JavaScript. Now, quite simply, map is going to accept data and then transform it into key value pairs by applying multiple different JavaScript functions, while reduce is going to accept key value pairs and reduce them into a smaller aggregation of key value pairs. So let's just use an example here. This is just a simple JavaScript right here, what we're using first. And I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm not going to get into complicated things until a little bit later in the tutorial. What I have here is just simply an array of different JavaScript objects. And what I'm going to do is provide information on all of these different objects and print them out the screen. So I'm going to show you the non-map way of doing it and then the map way of doing it. Just understand that this is going to be simple here in the very beginning. So I'm just going to create an, another array of student names. And what this is going to do is take the objects that I have in my students array and then push them into this other stud names array. And this is how you would do it if you weren't using map. So I'm just going to create a simple for loop and we're going to say that we want to continue cycling through all of this data as long as we have students to work with. And then we'll go student names and push on each of those individual students or push on their name part of the student object and then close that off. All right, so we have that all set up. Now we could just simply come in here and go student names like this. And you could see all of those get printed out to the screen. Now let's see how we would do that using map. And of course, all of the code that you see here is available in a link in the description. Now with map, what we can do is go variable student info equal to students. And I will use map. And what this is going to do is cycle the values through a callback function. And that function is going to be this guy right here. Let's just call that x. And then we can come in here and go return x name plus is in plus x class. And then close off that function like this. And now we can come in and go student info. And we could have just printed out the student's names, but we decided to do something a little bit more complicated. And I must add a little bit of a bug here in the object that I created, so just ignore that. But as you can see, we just went through the student object array and pulled all that information out. And you can see basically how map works by just calling this callback function over and over again for each item in the array. So that's just the basics of using map inside of JavaScript. Now let's take a look at reduce using just basic JavaScript. So again, we're going to be creating a whole bunch of score objects in the array called tests. And what reduce is going to do is receive an object and a starting object that we're going to be iterating through. And what we're going to do here is sum all of the values that we have inside of this array and then output that information. So this is how that would be done inside of just plain old JavaScript. So we'll go tests and we'll call reduce. And here is our function. Sum is going to be our final value that we're going to be using. And tests is going to be the thing that we're going to be iterating through. And then we can quite simply go return sum plus tests and score. And then we can close that off. This is going to be our starting value right here. And then we can just come in and go test sum. And you can see that it goes and takes all those different values and sums them together and outputs the final information. So that's just a very basic look at using map and reduce using regular JavaScript. Now let's jump over into MongoDB and show you exactly how we would use it inside of MongoDB. What I want to do here first is I am in my test DB database and I want to delete everything that's inside of this. So I'm going to call drop database. Don't know if there's any. Yeah, I guess there was some stuff in there. Okay, so that's all clear. And I'm going to add some classes to our collection here. So I'm going to go classes and insert. This be kind of a little bit of a review of creating documents in MongoDB. So I'm going to go philosophy. 101 is going to be the name of my class. And it's going to have a start date. And we'll go new date. I'll say it starts on... 2016, 10. We're going to have a list of current students that we have currently signed up for the class. 
and we'll have first name, last name, and then finally age. Close that off, put a couple more in here, and close off that array of students. We'll say it costs $1,600 to take the class. We'll have a professor named Paul Slugman. Topics we'll be covering, some information on the book that we'll be using, book title, price for our book, close off that document, and then input all that information. Now we'll go and get a whole bunch more. And there you can see I added a whole bunch of other additional classes inside of here. So we also have astronomy, we have geology, all in the same exact format, biology, chemistry, and so forth. So like I said, if you want to get a hold of those, you can either pause the screen and just throw in some information or I have all the code available in the description. So what I'm going to do now is use map to call every document in our collection. And then I'm going to use map to send the total student name list to reduce. So how we would do that is I'm just going to call this map function just to keep this very simple. Again, you can see callback function here. And here I'm going to go i equal to zero. Cycle through all this information as long as we have students to process. This is going to allow me to target each individual document. So I'm going to target each individual document and then the students inside of it and cycle through those individually one by one. And then emit is going to get two arguments being the key on which you want to group the data and then the data itself. So we'll go student and get our first name here. And we can combine these, of course. And then student, last name, and then one, because all we want to do is output all the student names. That's all we're looking for here. So we can keep that very simple and close that off. So now what we're going to do is jump over into reduce. And reduce is going to be called by map, and it's going to receive all the values for each of the given keys. And then just to keep things a little bit more interesting, then what we're going to do is add how many times the student name shows up in the collection of our documents. And for reduce again, I'm just going to go reduce function and go function. Student is going to be our key, and then we'll have our values. And I want to count how many times these students show up inside of all the different classes that we have here. And we'll cycle through as long as there are values for us to bring into this and count. We'll increment the counts. And then whenever we're all finished, we will output our results. Close that off. So now what we need to do is to define the map and the reduce functions and where to output that information. So how we do that is we go map reduce and we define our map function, which you just saw a second ago, and our reduce function, which is still here on the screen, and where we want that information to be output to. I'm going to have that go to map EX and then close that off. And then there you go. And you can see all the information here on the screen. So basically what this is saying is that we had six classes that were sent to our maps. So that was six of the total classes that students could sign up for. Emit sent 20 total students input and that would include duplications. So if the student showed up in multiple different classes, it would show that information. Reduce then showed us that seven students are in more than one class. And then finally, the final output shows that we were able to output all 11 students and their classes. And then if we want to take a look at what that looks like, we can just go DB, map, EX, find, and there is all the information. So here are all the different students and in how many classes they are signed up for. So pretty neat. We were able to jump through all of that data and pull out some pretty useful information using very little code. So now I'm going to do another map reduce set of functions. And what this is going to do is jump through all the different classes and do a similar thing with the professors to show how many classes the professors show up inside of. So what we're going to do with the map function first is we are going to get all of our professors, put them in a document we'll be able to work with here. So we'll go function. We want to get all of the professors. Let's go to this, professor. And we're just counting these guys. We can just throw one inside of there. Uh, make sure we spell professor right. And there we go, that's the map function. Now we can do the reduce function, professor, count. And if we want to sum all these, we can do that by just summing the count. And then we can output our little query we have here, classes, map reduce. Let's again define our map function name, our reduce function name. And just do something a little bit different, we can also further cut down on our results by issuing other query conditions. So what we want to do here is say we only want information on a professor that is Alice Jones. So we only want her information. But whenever we do this, we want to throw in a curly bracket at the very beginning of this because we also are going to insert where we want all this information to be output. So then we'll go out, 
and here I'll just say map example two and then close off that curly bracket and then the function all together and here you can see we inputted three bits of information we output three we're going to reduce that down to one and then we output that one piece of information do a find and there you can see Alice Jones pops up and we also know that Alice Jones teaches three different classes so pretty neat so let's get a little bit more complicated another thing we can do is let's go and do something a little different here let's go classes so we can revisit our class information uh, let's go clean this up a little bit pretty okay so now what I want to do is come in and mess around with topics parts so what I want to do here is I want to cycle through all the topics that are covered in all the other different classes that we have here and then count up the total number of times each topic is going to be covered across all of our potential different classes that we have here in our database. So let's create our map function. So I'm going to go map function 3 and we can go function and topics, this topics, and then all that, that information is going to be separated by commas. So I want to split those out so I'll be able to access each individually. And then we'll just go for i in topics and emit topics i and then one again. Close that off and then close that off. So there's our map function. So now what we want to do is count up the total number of times each topic is covered across all of our different classes. So we'll go variable reduce function 3 is equal to function. It's going to receive the key and the values going to be counting up this information and for i in values and then we'll just go count equal to values get each individual one close that off whenever we are finished return the total count of all the different topics and close that off and then we'll just come in here and execute all this with map reduce and map function three and reduce function three and let's just keep this simple I'll put all this information without any queries. Example three, and then close that off. Oh, I had a little bug there. Let's go in here. Forgot to put the E. See up here whenever I did that, I didn't put an E there. So let's just get rid of that and then execute it again. There you can see. Input all those different topics that we have, reduce them down to three, and then our final output. And if we do a find on this, let's go map example three. And there you can see all of the different topics that are covered across all the different classes. And you can also see that Earth was covered in three different classes, Energy was covered in two, the Moon was covered in two, and so forth and so on. So now let's issue even more complicated queries. Let's say that we wanted to come in and take a look at all of the costs for each of the individual professor's classes. Well, let's go and create our map function again. Function call emit and we're going to say that we want to output our professor and then we want to output some real values this time instead of just you know adding up all the different values and one of the things that we're going to be also sending to our reduce function is the cost so this gets a little bit more complicated and I think helps explain better what's going on and that's the end of our map function so now let's go and create our reduce function what this is going to do is reduce down to just the professors and the costs so reduce function for go function professor is going to be our key and then values are going to contain information on the costs and then I can get individual create a value object here it's going to have a total count as well as a total cost which are all going to be initialized to zero and then we can create a for loop here continue cycling through all this information as long as values contains additional information that we can work with increment of course and then we can get each individual piece so we'll go count and increment that values and specifically we want count and then we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing with cost we we'll get values once again except this time we're going to get the cost part of that object close off our for loop and then finally return value after we're done and close that off. And now what I want to do is show you the finalized function. What I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to come in and condense the results down to show the average of all the the average cost of all the professor's classes. And for finalize, call this finalize function for. Again, we're going to be getting our key which is going to be the professor and then the value that's going to be passed inside of this. And now I can go value average is equal to and then go value cost divided by value count the total number of classes 
and then whenever we're done, return that value. And then of course close that off with a curly bracket. And now let's execute all this. And again, we're gonna do it in much the same way, except we're gonna to have to put the finalized part in there. So we'll go map reduce, put in our map function, put in our reduce function. We're going to be outputting this information to map example four. And here is where we define finalize, which is going to give us an average finalize function for close off that curly bracket and there we can see there and now we can jump in and see our results that and then jump down here and change this from three to four and there you can see went through all of the different professors so we got Alice Jones here total cost for all three of her classes if you were going to attend those and then the average cost of those three classes. You can see here, once again, Paul Slugman is teaching a total of two classes, total cost $32.50, and the average cost, and the same thing for Rhonda Smith. So there are four different examples on how we can use map and reduce inside of MongoDB. Play around with them, mess around with different types of data, and I'm sure you'll get it. The only way to really learn this stuff is to practice at it. So just to finish things off, I wanted to cover a couple random database commands that I missed previously. We're going to be able to come in here and use something called distinct to get distinct results. And how we can do that is we can just go run command and we can say something like, let's say that we wanted to get a list of all the professors just using the name once across our whole entire class schedule and have no duplicates. That's where we would use distinct. And what we do is we put distinct in there, of course. Classes is going to be the collection we want to search for. Then we put key. And then after that, we put specifically the information that we want back from our database. And you can see right there, we were able to jump in and grab just those names and only use them one time. So that's just a way of using distinct. Now I'll use something a little bit more interesting, something called group. And what groups can allow us to do is perform complex aggregations and then separate the results into groups. So let's say that we want to take all of our book information and we want to get every book title that costs more than $110. Let's come back here and take a look first off at our book information, so classes, and there you can see. All right, so here's our book information. Each book has an ISBN, a title, and a price. So we're going to be jumping inside of here and we want to get a list of every book title that costs more than $110. How would we do that with group? Well, we're going to go DB, run command, and we're going to type in group. And then right here, what we're going to do, we're going to put NS, and we're going to type in the name of the collection we want to use. So we want to use the classes collection. Then what we want to do is come in and list the keys that we want to receive. And you can get more than one, of course. So in this situation, I want to get book, and I want to get price from that classes document. Throw a one inside of there. And I also said that I wanted to get my book title. So let's go in here, let's get that information, close that off. And we said that we want to only the books that have a price that is greater than 110. We can come in and list conditions inside of here that we want to work with. So we want to come in and target book price in this situation. And let's say that we only want those books that have a value greater than 110. We can do that, close off that curly bracket. And we could also call a reduce function on this, but in this situation, in the next part, I'll use reduce. In this part, I'm not gonna do anything with reduce. So I'm just gonna go function, current, value, show you in a second what exactly that does. And let's just throw nothing inside of there. It's not gonna do anything. And then we'll have initial inside of this. And this is going to store the initial value the first time reduce is called, but we're not using reduce, so we don't need to put anything inside of there. And then we'll just close our curly brackets, and boom. And you can see right here is a list of all the books that cost more than $110, as well as the title for said book. So let's do something a little bit more complicated. We're going to use reduce this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the total cost of books for each class. So we're going to do much similar things. We're going to go run command this. And here we'll go group. Once again, we're going to be using the same document. So we'll go classes. And then we're going to list the keys that we want to be pulling information out on. So we're going to get our book price as well as our book title. And in this situation, I'm not going to put any conditions inside of here. So I'm just going to put nothing inside of there. I am, however, going to come in and create a reduce function, current and result. What this is going to do is cycle through all that information and give me the total cost of books for each of the classes. 
So we're going to go result total, and we're going to go and get the current book price and multiply that. Or what I want to do here is get the total, if this doesn't make sense, what I want to do here is get the total number of students as well as the total price of the books, and I want to multiply them all together. So the total cost for books for every single student that is currently attending. So I'm going to go current students and length. That's going to give me the total number of students in the class, and then close that off. And then I'm going to have to put an initial value inside of here for total, since I am using reduce this time. And that total price, or that initial value for total, is going to be zero. And then we can close that off. And there you can see all the results. So we jump through all of the different classes. You can see all of those listed right here. And you can see the book price, as well as the total cost for books to supply every single student with a book in said class. So there you go, guys. There is a bunch of examples on how to use map and reduce inside of MongoDB, as well as how to use group and run a couple other different random commands. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.